All right, it is 9.29 a.m., a minute before the market open on a Friday, November the 12th. And this is the main watch list. I'm going to put this 15-minute uh, chart. AABB could be a morning panic bounce play if it looks clean. ILUS could be a morning panic bounce play. Or if it wants to do anything near the highs, maybe a breakout, that would be cool. I don't know if it'll have the momentum to do that, but I will be interested if it does. INND has been falling off a cliff, so I would like this one to try to have a first like green day or reversal day and then trade something off of VWAP, RGBP. I will consider a morning panic bounce play, but I think only if it looks clean. It's been having them for a few days, so we're going to be more cautious with that. TGGI likes to panic in the afternoon, but if they can do something in the morning kind of like the other day, I might be interested in that. HYSR can be a morning panic bounce play, and this is a new one. This is um, you know, depending on how it trades, could be a second green day. If it does something off of VWAP, I'll be interested in that as well. But for right now, I'm going to be focused on morning panic balance play setups. All right, it is 9.53 a.m. And I want to make an update. I didn't trade anything. And I think what I probably should have done differently was um, maybe not consider INND because it does have a, a bad daily chart. But I did like it because it had like a 16% drop from 13.9 almost 14 and then it got as low as 12 but this was a level 2 reversal this wasn't one where it has a bottom it kind of jumps a little and then it gets close to the bottom again and then it actually moves this was just a pure level 2 reversal the only thing you could have done is um, perhaps seeing this price action and thought alright it looks like a level 2 reversal might be in at 122 let's go ahead and buy and then you know if we cut the trade, if it breaks the day low, it's going to have that 12 level as a support, ideally, and it can try to hold itself together. And that would have been um, not too bad at all, but yeah, that one um, was just a level 2 reversal, so I never took it. IOUS was nothing here that I was interested in. In theory, AABB worked, and looking at it now, it is very similar, the chart to HYSR, if I still have that saved, I do. In the morning, you see how it's kind of all wicky and jumpy a little. Uh, very similar to AABV. I think this is my favorite type of morning panic balance play chart now because it is something that gives you a risk level. It does take um, its time before it tries to make a move towards the upside. And they do offer nice moves. Um, in theory, I should have probably focused on this, but I was looking at I and D. And I was looking at the other one. Uh, I removed it, but you know I knew to be cautious with this one because it was only up one day so it had that panic and then it bounced and then when it went back near the bottom just slightly below this level the panic bottom low it could have been a point where I could have bought at 43 it did get the 44.5 but that's actually all it did and you know it's continuously failing so you know I got rid of it um, off of the watches because you know if it's only gonna be up one day maybe it can do something in the future but you know if it's just up one day the less likely to work in terms of morning penny bounce place in theory I should have focused on AABB as for RGBP it wasn't a panic TGGI wasn't a panic either you know in theory let's just do like you know a risk reward thing Right, and this would have been like a $20 profit trading small size. Uh, let's go ahead and um, let's just see. It probably would trade maybe 2,000 shares. Let's just see if that's going to go with the risk reward. And in theory, this thing offered plenty of opportunity here at the ask, which is give or take 2451. So 2451, and then the risk level is going to be if the wick. Um, you know gets reached and it plays off of 24 because I don't want to be a part of this if it breaks under 24 let me remove that you know in theory I'd sell if it were to break this range it can make a move towards 24 sure it might hold it but then it might be kind of weird and um, in theory you know it might break 24 and then have like another move towards the downside which it very could you know do because it's right at its high so 2451, 490, again, in theory, right here at this level, because that's pretty much where the ask was. If I remove that, 480, so you can see that's about $10. So this is close to my $8 risk reward. That could have been a trade I could have um, been a part of, and then it did get to VWAP. It did get above VWAP too, 
and just to sell at 2562 490 oh I forgot to do that <laughs> yeah it would have been like 22 bucks and 40 cents give or take so that would have been kind of nice and I was watching this for you know a higher low a lower low but this one isn't really dropping that much for me to consider a long setup you can call this a cup and handle if you want I don't really like cup and handles they seem to work the least out of all of the you know classic chart patterns but uh, maybe maybe it'll do something there INND isn't coming back below VWAP like a considerable amount for me to be interested in it and the volume isn't looking too nice but if it kind of like starts up trending putting up higher highs higher lows uh, then if it still trades off of VWAP I might be interested in it so yeah that's pretty much all I have for the moment you know in theory it could have taken AABB shouldn't have been looking at INND because it has that ugly daily chart although it did offer a move here as well as that other one which was NEWH probably should have just traded AABB I just thought the chart looked weird but you know thinking now it was exactly like HYSR and that offered a great opportunity so in the future I'm going to totally be looking for charts like that and I'll be interested in buying them right now I'll be looking for more setups but right now um, I don't see anything all right it is 10 11 a.m. and um, I had a trade here with OZSC I think I maybe should have had to have traded this with larger size but um, I don't like the price action right now it is looking kind of ugly but um, anyway this was um, an uptrending stock it looks bad if you put a 200 day chart but as for what it's been doing recently if we just put like a 90 day chart it is trying to turn around and offer a move towards the upside so I wanted to do the classic thing where uptrends it has a low under VWAP first you know like level under VWAP and then it uptrends maybe it makes a double top or best case it makes a higher high and then it comes back and puts up a higher low maybe just slightly lower than the higher I mean um, slightly higher than the previous lower level under VWAP and then you know it can continue putting up higher lows from there and then maybe break out of the range and do something nice but this price action is looking kind of ugly now it is trying to hold this 54 level but when I got out it looked like it was gonna break under it kind of like that AABB long setup yesterday I was just a bit scared but um, I was long 15,000 shares at 543 and that was uh, 1006 so right right here and you know in theory the idea was it's going to hold 54 there was a big level um, of people who were at the bid holding 54 and um, the issue was is that it was there it was taking some sales people were selling into 54 and then we had something like right now like a 300k seller just show up and it looked like it was going to break under 54 so I got out before that was potentially going to happen just a minute later, um, I barely held this thing. It was actually under a minute that I held this trade at 10.07 in the next minute. And the low of that candle was 54. So it did hold, but it looked like it was going to break it just because it was at 3. No, I think it was a 400k seller at the ask. And then the bid, which was strong when I first got in, it started to get much smaller. So, you know, I thought maybe it might break lower and then put up a lower range and then trade off a of VWAP, right? But it actually did hold and it had a sketchy wick right here if I was still in the setup I don't know if I would have um, gotten out I probably wanted because of how quick it was um, very similar to listed stocks and then it kind of bounced to 55 so it didn't really offer that much range it's still technically trying to hold the level but I don't like how there's big people at the ask showing up and um, you know the bid isn't looking that strong in comparison so I, I don't mind actually the fact that I got out and I lost just a tiny amount just like three bucks and um, the percent loss was under half a percent so that's a pretty good you know loss amount in terms of how much I was trading which was a $800 position but and actually I should have traded larger even though this setup kinda didn't work out because of the fact that you know I'm in at some um, 543 right 15,000 shares so right here that's a $814 position if I cut losses 
at 54 right it's only four bucks but uh, you know I think in theory I should always account for slippage so I think I probably would have put 535 right and in that case it goes from 802 to 814 so that's $12 risk so um, didn't really have my uh, risk level really calculated you know maybe I should have done 10,000 shares in that sense maybe I didn't need to go actually larger 543 to right so 535 yeah that would have been better and it's going you know dollar by dollar because it's 10,000 shares I, okay so in that sense I should have traded less I should have traded um, 10,000 shares instead of 15 and what I should have done was not put 54 as my risk level I always should account for slippage so you know in that case 535 I would have been in a smaller size and still the setup didn't really work but I probably should have had my position size better um, I'm learning this as I'm going with this uh, recording um, I should have done better in that sense but let's see if this thing can try to do something I mean it's choppy as uh, like just really choppy as crap so maybe it can do something later as for the other ones INND kept up trending nothing I'm interested in it never did like a you know considerable dip under VWAP, ILUS, nothing, nothing. This one is fading. I don't get this one. This one has like these crazy spikes and then it also falls off a cliff. All in the same case. This was that cup and handle thing. Yeah, it's not it's not really that nice, but at least it looks like it's clean. Nothing here and um yeah, I'll make an update later. You know, maybe there's a setup in the future, but I don't mind my attempt there. I learned some lessons there, and uh, yeah, I'll make an update later. All right, it is 10:51, and I want to make an update on the attempted buy. Uh, whoever was the market maker, that was just so stupid. But I was interested in I and D because it had that panic, had this run up, and then you know it's playing off of the lows right here. If you look at a 15-minute chart. You know, this is a level of uh, support that it might try to hold. There was a big seller bullying it all the way down to the bottom, and then he disappeared because he was taken out. And I thought this would be kind of interesting, right? So then, you know, I did place an order at 1048, right about here at um, 124. And then, like, the ask just lifted up and went all the way to 128. And then some yuppie pushed it up there and bought it at 128 right here and then you know I thought alright I probably am not gonna get my order executed at 124 but in theory I was in size appropriately because I'm in at 124 right here and that would have been a $248 position I would cut the trade if it breaks 121 and then let's just say I sell at 12 because there was some slippage that's perfect that's my $8 risk level but you know this is that was dumb I guess it's just because there isn't that much volume traded but it just had that little lift off you know the ask just lifted up really high and then somebody actually bought up there and um, you know now it's no longer something I want to be a part of because I don't want to chase it even if it goes to 15 um, you know in theory this thing can be like a first dip under VWAP and then it can uptrend and then you know play off of it and maybe do higher lows off of VWAP and then maybe it stops going under it, it holds it and then it starts holding above it, floating off of it so unfortunately that just did not work and actually OZSE was a very similar pattern but I was looking more at um, you know IND and because of the fact that you know it looked better in that case on a daily chart because it was right at its lows um, yeah this setup here failed um, it wasn't like it just fell off a cliff right after I bought right it wasn't like this happened right after I bought but it did try to hold itself together there would have been a, a lot of opportunities for me to have probably have tried selling at a higher price but Overall, the setup did not work out with um, OZSC, and this one is at least not that crazy with a spread. Uh, a little crazy, not as crazy as INND was right there. Um, that would have been nice if I was in at 124. As for the other ones, there's nothing that I'm interested in. 
uh, yeah just falling off a cliff these big sell at IOUS you know I'm not much of a swing trader but if I was I'd probably consider shorting this one just because it looks like it's not going to try to get to the highs even though at pre-market it was a tick at 51 right but that wasn't very much uh, nothing here with AABB and um, yeah I'll make an update to see if that setup worked here with um, OZSC as well as INND how it does later on but you know maybe it's just you know it just doesn't have that much volume which but I don't understand why I would trade with a spread like that but that's fine alright it is 11 12 <laughs> I want you to note this big person right here somebody literally just took like at one tick just a hundred and twenty three thousand dollar position just just like that um but uh okay so the setup i was talking about it gave it one more um i gave it one more shot when it came back to the level and i was interested in it but um unfortunately i and d is so depressing it is such a horrible um i'm not gonna call it a pump but it's a horrible one because um you know at, at some point it's probably it's gonna do it eventually but I'm not gonna be you know like just there crying um, you know when is it gonna come back like some guy who's in at 21 4 or something like that you know thinking when it's it gonna turn around I'm not that person but I was interested in what could have been a turnaround let's see if 12 was gonna hold cuz that's gonna be important if that actually breaks under but um, again going back to this chart that's a pretty significant level and I guess this stock might actually be that depressing enough to break under it but ideally it doesn't um, when it came back and gave me that same opportunity I got in at 124 1102 and at the time it was actually looking nice right but then 1103 came which was fine but then 1104 it got desperate just somebody dumped which doesn't look like much anymore but somebody dumped like a million shares at the bid and it just kept downtrending from there and then it tried to come back and then it started to look really desperate and my idea was that if it were to break this 121 level or you know if it looks like it's gonna break it I'm gonna get out and maybe 12 is gonna hold which is holding now but that wasn't really part of my plan because if you look at this chart it never really got to 12 before it would get to like 121 or something like that so for it to get to 12 just doesn't look nice there were always large people on the ask, unfortunately, and I did try at one two four, and I got out at um, it was actually a nice sell at one two two. I think, and to be exact, it was like one. Um, it was like it was it was just like one tick lower than one two two, but that was my sell at eleven oh nine, which was right here, right here, yeah, at basically one two uh, one two two. And um, right after that, or actually, yeah, the next minute is when there was that big uh, 10 million, I think, 10 million share person. Like, that was a lot of zeros. That was pretty cool, but I'll make an update to see what this one does ultimately. Um, there are just too many people selling on the ask with a lot of size and um, too many people dumping their shares at the bid. So, it could still turn around. It's just very uh, depressing. Um, I I and D. I feel bad for anybody along this. Um, I'll make an update later. All right, it is 12:40 uh, p.m. and I want to go over the aftermath of I and D. It actually worked. Um, I don't know. Maybe I need to be less um, scaredy cat, but it did hold that 12 level. I just didn't like how it got to 12 because before it would only tick. You know, right at this one two one one two two level, those little wicks there. But it held twelve at least, and it did uptrend, so it's not completely pathetic. It did turn around. You could even call this right now an inverse head and shoulder, shoulder head, shoulder. But I'm not going to trade something this um, a liquid. So you know, this thing actually worked out. My entry was at um, right about here. Yeah, that one two four eleven oh two. Now the issue was is that you know my entry at one two four was never really um, an ideal entry price given what it did because it didn't like trade a, a little baby range lower, but it did play it around. It did uptrend, um, you know, according to the setup. 
it would have been more ideal if I was in at like one, two, three, which is just one take, sure. But you know, given how low the price to this stock is, it actually does matter. Even one, two, two, but that would have been scary back here. The guy with the hundred K position must be pretty happy right now. <laughs> It's at 132. So in theory, I was in 20,000 shares at, you know, 124. Right? So that was a $248 position. That would be pretty nice. That would be, um, yeah, that would be like 14 bucks, give or take, just under 15. Uh, trading small dollar amounts and you know it did work out it, it did ultimately work out it would have been better again if I had a better entry maybe I should have been more patient but I don't know I look forward to rewatching what you know I was saying about the setup and see um, how I can go forward from there and continue to get better and I am in a new setup with RGBP is very similar to INND Right, it's very similar to I and D. I've said this is an inverse head and shoulders, and I like these a lot more. Um, it is right at its lows now, not the very low of the run up, like you know, I and D is pretty much at the lows of the run up with that support level. But RGBP could try to do something here um, because it is near that range of the lows right here, and we do have that inverse head and shoulders. So I am in at um, right here 259 I think it was like 25895 something like that I rounded up to 29 uh, 259 1232 right here I was actually close to taking an entry when it was at 262 but I just wanted to be a little more patient learning what um, I learned with INND and then you know when we had this downtrend here it still held this level in theory I'm gonna get out if this thing breaks 25 and if I sell and there's some slippage and I'm out at 245, it's going to be just that $8 loss, which is going to be fine. That's my risk level. I am going to be watching this. Now, this is going to be resistance at uh, 265. It's going to be resistance here at 268. VWAP will be a super nice goal to sell into, but I don't know if that's going to happen. That was a crazy move right there at 266. We do have support at 26. This is a setup in the main key right now. I do have a stop. If it's, um, I should have a stop at least if it breaks under this level right here once again. But um, I'm gonna let this one play out. It could obviously fail. Right now it is looking like it's trying to maybe ideally do like a second higher low, a higher low off of this level, but. I'll keep watching if the price action starts to look bad I'll get out but um, that's where I'm at at the moment alright it is 1 p.m. and um, I guess I did a pro gamer move <laughs> I sold 3,000 shares this is my tick right here and the last 2,000 shares I'm gonna sell if it breaks this level or maybe probably if it breaks this level I'll, I'll sell if it breaks under this 256 level for sure my fear is that there are just too many people on the ask and this is going to be a grind, um, just a horrible uptrend, this is going to take forever, you know, it's just not going to do it anytime soon and just in case it is the top because there are just too many people on the ask, I'll at least have 3,000 shares out. You know, INND, to get as high as that level, it did work out despite it always having a wall of people on the ask so I'm gonna take that into consideration we'll see what this one does over time and yeah I have some shares sold there why not I don't have a day uh, PDT account so that's an update alright it is 206 and I wanna make an update uh, yes um, that last video was like really good uh, that I sold most of my position when it was still at its highs it did uptrend a little it did break the big seller that was at 264 but <laughs> what happened was is that when 264 was taken out hello hello there was a 1 million share seller on the ask at 265 and that was pretty bad news considering this stock doesn't really at the time trade with like a million shares very easily now 
um, it started to downtrend uh, like you know right after and I did sell 258 that was um, 118 so let's look at 118 which was right here right here very innocent looking sell at 118 right when it was actually breaking this low well not necessarily this one at 256 I kinda saw when it was breaking this one because that price action was pretty bad just you know it breaking out of a level that it's been struggling with and then they have a million share seller on the ask and then it started to you know sell off I did get out right there at uh, 258 which actually wasn't that bad at all right about here and that does mean that for the part that I sold early I was um, you know profitable and then on the section the last 2000 shares was just 20 cents so I'm profitable on that last trade here but yeah obviously you know it, it had a long way to go it dropped right just to give them a perspective this thing was 257 it dropped another three um, you know just just like three I guess I don't know what do you call it three parts of a penny it just it just did a considerable drop and I'm very happy that I sold there. Sure, I could have sold all of it, but hindsight is 2020. I don't think I'm going to trade anything else. So I did all ZSC. This dip under VWAP, which failed. Um, I guess it did turn around, but this would have been kind of hard for me to buy. I was watching it, though, when it was doing that drop at the same level that it was at. It actually did hold itself. It went from 51 to 53, so not really the best range. INND was the second trade, and this one did work out. I just didn't like the way it was trading. Maybe I should have risked it off of 12 cents. But, um, you know, I honestly don't mind it too much. I'd rather play it safe than sorry, even though it means I didn't get to sell for a profit, which this thing did have the opportunity to do. I think I was just a bit too early in this case. But, you know, I'm not going to try the setup again after, um, you know, I, I wasn't able to be successful once. But,. If I keep seeing that maybe I'm just too early in a certain range and then it works eventually, maybe I'll consider that. But at least with morning panic bounce plays, if I'm in a morning panic, I'm in and then I'm out. And then, you know, I get in again because it looks like it's going to be different this time. A lot of those times it doesn't work out, but maybe for longer setups that take more time, that could be something to take into consideration. AABB is just playing off of VWAP a bit nicer compared to the other ones, but not really ideal TGGI just being TGGI I'll make an update to see what these things do by the end of the day but uh, yeah that was a pretty good you know trade a lot of experience with RGBP even if I'm barely making or losing anything I think I'm learning a lot alright it is 4 50 p.m. and I'm here to call it off overall I finished um, down like I think five bucks and sixty cents which is fine because I'm trading small small losses and I'm doing a lot better with my uh, you know dollar risk level ever since I implemented that uh, strongly since last week I feel like I'm just more confident uh, more comfortable trading because I know in theory how much I can lose worst case scenario and um, I'm also doing better just holding on the setups longer which is ideal um, OZSC did not work that was the first dip under VWAP it did do this when it got to the low of that level and then the trade after that, INND, this one actually worked, but I was, um, I did not risk properly. I risked if 121 right here was going to break, and then it did break. I got out, it held 12, and then it came back, right? And it even got to uh, the 140, so this thing was actually a super profitable setup. And, um, you know, even though it's hindsight 2020, I feel like this is the kind of setup that I could have held for a really long time because it was just putting up, you know, higher lows. Here was a higher low, very liquid, but, you know, higher low right here. And then I would have sold at this point because I don't hold any LTC setups um, overnight. And maybe in the future, if I um, have the same setup and I risk the level properly instead of, you know, something like 1-2-1, one, one, um, <laughs> And not being picky, I could uh, totally do 12 if 12 breaks and then account for that. So maybe, for example, I'm in INND and I did trade 20,000 shares, right? And I'm in at 124, and then maybe it breaks 12 and I get out at 11.5. That's actually pretty big. 
So that's 230. That's 248. So I would probably trade smaller here. Right? Super small. Um, let's see that. 150, 2.4. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I would do. I would probably be half my size if I risked it accordingly. If you know, 12 breaks, which is a round number, and it excuse me, and it kind of played off of it. I would have been half my size, but I would have been a lot profitable because I would have probably been able to sell for a lot more, and I would have been patient even when it went towards the bottoms, and then that last setup with um, RGBP. Um, yeah, this one worked out a little because it did put up a higher low, but that was it. It broke under. Um, maybe I should have been aggressive and sold when the trend line broke. I doubt it. I like where I cut losses um, for that smaller half of the portion that I traded. That's it. I think a lot of good lessons, a lot of potential, a lot of good opportunities. I'm going to keep that $8 risk reward probably once I start seeing that I'm being a lot more profitable trading the setups better. Um, definitely this is going to be uh, something in the making and then I'll start trading larger size from there.